Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it seems like absolutely ages since we did a build in the 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet, so I thought we'd rectify that today by building the beginning of the secret mysterious thing that's right at the bottom of the cabinet using all of those 2x2 two two slope pieces. <laughs> Good, good. Well, when I mentioned that I was using all these 2x2 two two slopes uh, under the sea, a lot of you did guess straight away that I'd be building, yes, a massive pyramid. Why? Well, because they're just so amazing looking, quite frankly, and I'm taking major inspiration from an old Pharaoh's Quest set, uh, 7327, the Scorpion Pyramid from 2011. So cool because it had a great big giant scorpion crawling all over it, at least it did on the box art. Uh, I think mine will have to have a monster, probably more than one monster, uh, massive as well, maybe not a scorpion. I suppose the undersea equivalent of a scorpion would be a great big lobster, wouldn't it? But I think I'll have uh, monsters crawling all over it, as well as loads of little uh, Atlantis creatures as well. Uh, but even bigger, even better, and with a few surprises in it as well. Uh, so the first thing to mention is I'm building this on base plates, not because I'm going to be using these as the base layer of my uh, cabinet. In fact, this level will be dark tan rather than this normal tan as well. Uh, but I want to do one thing at a time, so I'm going to do the entire pyramid. Then I'm going to create a new biscuit to sort of build it all on, that sort of removable large deep section with some contours on it and all the rest. Uh, and then I'm going to have to take this off these base plates and put it onto there. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, so that uh, pyramid was obviously uh, Egyptian. And although some very generous people have sent in some lovely hieroglyph uh, parts uh, in the past on brick calls and so on, I I'm not going to make mine Egyptian themed, partially because, well, it's under the sea and that makes, well, doesn't make a lot of sense unless you involve UFOs and some sort of uh, ridiculous backstory. So I'm not going to have hieroglyphs in it. Maybe I'll add some stickers in due course from the Atlantic rain, uh, Atlantis range when I uh, finish this. I'll have to make up my mind later. Uh, but, you know, mine is going to be covered in, well, plant life and other undersea matter, of course. Um, now, that particular set, the Scorpion Pyramid, was also built on a great big 3D base plate. I mean, it had sort of 3D elements that were going up about five brick heights. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have mine with a much larger footprint going all the way to the base using slopes, which means it will be much, much bigger. Uh, only a few brick height taller, I think, but because it will go all the way to the bottom down the sides, it will be much more voluminous. In fact, I did some maths <laughs> and it will be two and a half times the volume on the inside. Not that we'll see a great deal of the inside because that set was cut away at the back so you could get at all the play scenes and so on. Mine's going to be right at the back in the middle of the lower level of my cabinets. So there's no way you're going to be able to see into the middle of it. So I'm going to have mine totally enclosed. So I'm going to be focusing more on the exterior than the interior. And I'm going to try and make it a bit brighter using other colours like gold and dark turquoise and even coral bricks in there as well. And with a neon twist at the end because... After all, this whole thing is going to be lit up by UV light when it's done. So, yeah, I want it to be really, really bright. Uh, cool. So the other thing that uh, that set had in its setup was basically it cheated. Down the sides, it would actually use plates mounted at an angle, which, well, was very efficient use of bricks and other efficiency from an official uh, Lego set. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue to use bricks for the full length of the sides and indeed the back, just in case you're peering around from a certain angle. Uh, so we're going to have a load of bricks used where we had the base plate and these side plates before because we don't do things by halves on this channel. So yeah, let's worry about the biscuit later. This is the footprint. You can start to see that I've incorporated it uh, at the back into a bit of rocks because we're going to have a big rock face behind uh, the pyramid. Uh, and then I can add in little attachments like this, which I've already started, you see, just in grey, camouflaged there. Uh, and then I can have great big swaying bits of plant life on the back of it. 
sort of all blending it in with everything else. So that is my plan with the occasional bit of dark tan and lots of ruiny sections all the way through it as well. So it looks, well, kind of like the real pyramids in Egypt, you know, sort of falling apart <laughs> quite reasonably given their age. <laughs> but the Lego set, that, that Scorpion Pyramid again, was a bit too perfect. It didn't have any real... Uh, you know, crumbling bits around it. So I'm going to be doing that as well. Oh, and the other thing worth mentioning is I'm going to keep uh, both of the main play features of that set. One was having twisty sort of things that you could open and close the big front doors up here. And I'm also going to have the steps going up to that big front door that also can be opened as well. I haven't decided what I'm going to put inside. So I might need your help with that, actually. Should I put more beasties ready to rush out or maybe, uh, I don't know, <laughs> some sort of gold. Maybe it's a massive treasure trove, actually. Actually, I quite like that idea already. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of making this up a little bit as I go along. Right, so I think I've got an absolute ton of these. So uh, I should be able to get started building the next level up. Cool, let's go. Okay, we're making some good progress. Uh... It is quite fiddly to do with all these two by two slopes because it's quite fragile. You can't push down too hard on any one section or it will kind of crumple in. I think it will get a bit stronger when it's complete and topped out, but <laughs> until then it's going to get harder and harder to build. Uh, and made even worse by the fact that uh, although you can get bigger pieces, these two by twos are quite small, but to continue that sort of small brick theme uh, like it was built by an ancient civilization. I've even used small one by two bricks repeatedly uh, where I could have used a sort of one by whatever 12 brick or something in their place but I quite like these pleasing sort of join lines very regularly. It looks good uh, and then I've done all sorts of different um, bits of decay kind of where it's piled up at the bottom or where a little bit's missing there we used a too tall slope there with the occasional dark tan one just to break it up. Uh, and then this section I'm going to add in here where we're starting to bring in that back corner over the rocks. And I've got a couple of connection points there for even more plants of the same sort, at least for now. I think I'll focus more on the plants uh, being more interesting when I've got the pyramid done. But you get the idea, have them sort of mounted both ways. And that's looking kind of weird and creepy and spooky already and they can be angled wherever I want them. Uh, then I've finished the back bit just by doing that quite quickly. It is sloped in uh, the majority but I have added some bigger bricks for example here I'm going to mount another great big uh, burp piece, big ugly rock piece like these uh, just to really build it into the rock face so it won't be a completely smooth back side there. Uh, and then I'm just starting to bring in uh, some gold columns which I think look really nice. Uh, to flank this so when it's open it looks very pretty as well. I'll probably have to put some sort of boundary in here otherwise you'll see into probably some more ugliness of these bricks on the back. I don't know but uh, we'll explore that as we keep going but yeah I like it and just these little differences on the corner we've got the normal sort of uh, corner uh, slope there but then one with the corner chopped off like something hit it and even here, just using a one by two and a cheese wedge piece to make it look like it's even more falling apart. Uh, these bottom bits on the corners I've left deliberately uh, because I'm going to be putting great big uh, vertical spires on them, I suppose, so what are they called? Obelisks. So the original Scorpion Pyramid set had one, kind of off to one side. Uh, I'm going to have four, one on each of all four of the corners. Uh, and in that way, it'll look very much like the Taj Mahal, I suppose. <laughs> um, that's been done a few times already in Lego. But uh, yeah, having one of those on each corner will make it look even more uh, sort of impressive, I think. Uh, and you'll see I've used some odd coloured red bricks and so on on the inside just to support where we've got these kind of inny sections because otherwise there's just no support for the brick uh, on the underside. So you won't see that later. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I'll make this side the same and then start incorporating that stairway next. Looking good, looking good. Lots of nice texture and colour change on there. I think it will pop even more when the ground is darker because it's blending in a little bit. But uh, looking good. We've got the stairs in, obviously. And the supporting bit for the sort of first bit of floor because there's a door here. Um, that will allow some of our Atlantis people to walk out or be perched up there or something like that. And this is our first play feature here. Basically, you twist 
this sort of axle set up and the door or the stairway will flip up to reveal either that treasure trove or more beasties or goodness knows what. <laughs> That's where I've got my gold pillars flanking on the inside. So I think that looks really good. Snaps down quite pleasingly. Uh, and I've continued this sort of zigzag pattern in all the colours up the sides. There was a hint of that in the original, but not enough, I thought. So I thought that looks really nice, actually. So I've continued that. Very nice. Uh, and then at the bottom of the steps, I think we need some sort of a uh, sort of finial or end point or something like that. So I've made these. And this is the colour scheme that I'm going to use to decorate my pyramid. Basically dark turquoise, coral, and then gold bricks. I think that looks really good. So I've got a pair of those and I'm either going to mount them kind of like that to continue this stairs out a little bit uh, with a finial on the end, or maybe I'll have them kind of like that, which is how I'm going to do them for now, just because, well, I haven't got a base plate to support them out the front and they'll look a bit like that. And I'll have this sort of thing on the top of the uh, four obelisks on the four corners and on the top of the actual pyramid itself, of course. So that'll look really nice. And the reason why I chose this is partly because it's really bright and under sea, but also because of its effect with UV light. Now, if I bring my UV torch in, you can start to see that those coral pieces really glow in the dark. Uh, and in fact, if I turn off my filming lights temporarily, you'll be able to see, wow, they really glow under UV light. So that's just an amazing quality of that particular shade of plastic. But I think when that's being really picked up as a highlight, either side of the gold uh, all over the place, because this whole area will be flooded with UV light, it'll be absolutely fantastic. Right, so lights back on. Uh, and then... You might be wondering why I've actually got a vertical line of bricks in between each set of slopes, because although real life pyramids are sort of stepped, uh, they would have been finished off with just uh, slope pieces coming up to a point. And the reason why I've done that, much like the original set, is just to get a bit of height into it, because if we used 45 degree slopes right from the bottom <clears throat> and had the base as wide as it is there, it would probably end up being about that tall, which isn't very impressive at all. <laughs> so if we wanted it to be way up here, off the screen, then the base of it would be absolutely ridiculous off the sides on both sides as well. So that's why we've got this sort of space row in between. But the uh, left and right sides have got that slope. And I think that means that we still get the very sort of pleasing look of a pyramid whilst it's sort of being foreshortened in our cabinet. Because the other thing about having it done properly on all four sides would mean, well, it probably wouldn't fit in the depth of my cabinet, which would be a nightmare. So there we go. Okay, so you can see I've put in some props for the next level. This is to put some dark bluish gray plates on so I can have the first sort of internal level supported. That will support some doors next, which will have the second play feature on. And we'll continue with this theme of uh, slopageness, <laughs> which I'm sure is a word, <laughs> going up uh, until, well, the next level, which will be kind of the balcony above the door, because I want to keep that. And then we can have our king of the depths on there. And I'm kind of torn. Originally, I was always going to have the Atlantis uh, crab king, uh, maybe a uh, lobster king, no, sorry. Uh, and I think I still will. He's currently in the lead because everything else I've got more than one of. So that makes more sense. But yeah, I think it's really shaping up and looking good. Golly, this is fiddly. Uh, every time I push something down, I might lose one of these bricks uh, collapsing underneath it. And then I've got to kind of fish it out from the inside or tip the whole thing around trying to get it to a place where I can actually reach it. So it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, I'm not going to look forward to transferring the whole thing onto my uh, biscuit when I make that. I must say, I'll probably have to take it fully apart and rebuild it fully again. But anyway... Oh, right. So we had the stairs in last time. Uh, now we've got the kind of next bit, which is the platform up there. It's a bit of a problem getting it so that still works without hitting all of this. But I think I've fixed that. And you can see I've started to do one side of the doorway with a bit more colour up here. And our handle here for our second play feature, just like in the original set, where we've got our doors. And I've got more gold pieces and dark turquoise pieces in that uh, for decoration. And here's the second one of those. And I've also added in a piece that I've been trying to use for quite a long time, actually, which is this one, which is uh, a modified brick. You might not recognize, actually. It was only on uh, the Ultra Agent sets. It's actually an app brick uh, for use with uh, a mobile phone or tablet app. Uh, so it must have something electronic on the inside, presumably. 
Uh, and that came in eight sets, including 70171, Ultrasonic Showdown uh, from 2015, which is a very, very awesome set indeed. Uh, but I just thought it really looked like an old-fashioned doorknob, kind of like a hanging ring in a, a, a sort of fixture. So although you won't be able to see that detail, I'm sure, when it's in the cabinet, <laughs> you can barely see it now, black on black. I thought it was a great place to use uh, an odd piece. So that will go in there as well. And then we'll have two... Uh, play feature handles to kind of open the door and I think they're probably going to be permanently in open position because well although I've put in this mechanism now uh, we'll want to see in because I'm going to have something quite dramatic on the inside which I may also have visible from in here I've not decided it depends how it kind of looks there's going to be a lot of experimentation but I'll come to that later Oh, the next thing is to get this side on. Well, more back, more the other side, and get the other side of uh, everything I've done there on. Oh, but do you like my other finial there? Another bit that will glow up in the dark. So, yeah, I think it's looking rather nice. Houston, we have working doors. Nip, 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 nip. They are cool. It's kind of like Star Trek, really, isn't it? <laughs> Well, we've got to a critical point. Uh, the front is pretty complete. The side is all the way up to uh, almost the top balcony level on this side, but not on the others. And that's just so we can get some really big pieces onto the inside. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I'm starting to kind of regret doing this in such small pieces. <laughs> I was adding this section up here and it just kept crumbling down uh, because I put too many kind of structural weaknesses uh, to make it look old uh, lower down but anyway I think it's now stable you can see some tiny sort of minor join lines that aren't fully pushed down but it's yeah it's a lot harder than you'd think anyway yes onto these big pieces for the inside what are they going to be well I'm going to incorporate these a pair of these great big panel pieces in trans neon orange uh, now these are only available in one set, 6983 Ice Station Odyssey from 1993, which is an Ice Planet set. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to include these in here was because, well, they're going to really reflect UV light amazingly well and kind of glow. So what I thought was, because we're not going to have an interior, I'd have these basically mounted ugh, inside the pyramid. Well, I should have done the other one first. Hang on. <laughs> That was foolish of me, can't get it out now, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'd have these on the inside of the pyramid representing some mysterious glow. And then when the cabinet is lit absolutely full with UV light, this should really shine. So there we go, there are the two panel pieces which will be very carefully joined in the middle, visible on the inside. And it already looks quite mysterious and interesting, but imagine when it's lit up, which I'm going to cheat using my torch for now. And I'm just going <clears> to <throat> have that shining into the uh, depths like that. And you can start to see it kind of really glowing there. Let me turn off my filming lights again. Oh, yes. Look at that really glowing from the inside. And that's the effect I'm going for. That looks pretty good, actually, doesn't it? Now, what I'm really going to do is not use my actual torch to light up the inside. I'm actually going to use the second oh, of the UV sort of lighting strips that I got. One of these strips is uh, stuck to the underside of the glass of that lower level. Uh, but it does mean that I've got another one free. And I thought if I had one sort of built into the biscuit uh, coming up, underneath here, then I could have absolutely loads of UV lights on the inside of this, really shining on those neon orange pieces and making them glow even more than I'm managing to make them glow with my UV torch. Now it really is better in there, isn't it? Wow, so that is the plan. And then I can have even more uh, of that light strip shining up the next level up, which will be sort of the uh, section behind the balcony. So even when we've got the door closed, you'll get a hint of some glow from within, and maybe you'll get a bit of <laughs> light leakage in little cracks like this, I don't know. But that is my plan, and I think, wow, it's a pretty good one, actually. Yeah, I bought these pieces absolutely ages ago on a brick hall for just this purpose. Shows how long I plan ahead sometimes, and yeah, that's the first time I've seen it, so I'm really quite impressed with that. Uh, yeah, wow, it's going to be really hard building all those lights into the biscuit, though. 
Cool, uh, let's get these enclosed for now. Oh, finally, there it is topped out at the balcony level that's above the door. And that looks really nice. Added a bit more uh, variation of colour again, uh, just to keep it interesting. Yeah, it's coming together really well. Now, we'll have to redo this level, actually, uh, in due course, because I'm going to have to get that uh, strip lighting into the top section. I can't have it completely separated off by solid plates, so I'll probably have to do a combination of smaller plates. And I just hope when I do it the second time, it's not as much of a nightmare as this one has been, because pushing down on these unsupported slopes from uh, uh, above, when you've got them coming in from three angles, just kind of caves in every time. So you can only one hand in underneath supporting while you push down with the other one. And anyway, it's an absolute nightmare. The amount of pieces I lost on the inside and had to shake them out by holding the whole thing upside down was unbelievable. But I think you'll agree that the outcome is worth it with this great big pyramid that will continue up as part of uh, part two all the way to a point on all sides. And then we can continue this rock face up the back as well. And we've got one play feature being our uh, stepway, of course. Other one being the doors. Uh, I've just got the torch still leaning in for the UV light. Uh, but the one thing that I did mention earlier that we haven't yet done is adding our four obelisks. And these are using that same color scheme that we've got on these top finials, bottom, well, mid medium, uh, mid-level <laughs> finials, and these bottom level finials here. So uh, they'll glow very much with these one by two plates in coral. They don't seem to do two by two ones, at least not when I bought these on Lego Bricks and Pieces. So we'll have one of those back there with this plant growing next to it. One of those back there, one of them here, and one of them here. So now it looks very, oh yes, it looks very grand and imperious, doesn't it? Much like Taj Mahal, as I said earlier. Oh, but these six points, four and two more here look really great. So imagine when they're all glowing with this light, that'll be great. And there's a little bit of coral here, here and here. So yeah, I might just turn out my filming lights once more so we can kind of experience a bit of that. Oh yeah, that'll be glowing. That'll be glowing in there and on there, on these columns and obviously on the inside. Oh yes, very nice indeed. I'm very happy with that. So uh, you'll have to let me know if you want me to continue with this build next time, see if I can get all the way to the top. Uh, I'm not sure actually, having just offered that, if that's possible, because the uh, number of 1x2 slopes I've got left for the remaining section doesn't look enough, does it? I think I've ordered enough though, so they must be on another order, so I probably have to have a brick haul first. But that's probably a good thing, because, you know, it's nice to mix things up and uh, do different builds uh, at the same time on the channel to keep things interesting. So, yeah, very happy with that. Uh, but do tell me what you think of my pyramid stage one. Well, as is often the case with Lego, building something quite grand is always very rewarding because it always looks a lot better than you even planned it. This uh, level of sort of crumbling detail, these interesting colours popping out every now and then, and the details of the finials and the play features and the doors and absolutely everything else looks really good. And we haven't even got the integrated UV lights on yet, so I think this is only going to get even better. And those four obelisks, yes, and the two kind of mini ones on the front, they look really, really good if you ask me. Imagine when it's covered in plants with a great big beastie crawling all over it. <laughs> Fantastic. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a brick haul. Uh, and then we'll be doing, well, maybe this. Let me know if you want that with the bricks that we'll get from the haul. Or if you want to do something else, then, uh, well, let me know that as well. And we'll get on with some variety. But yeah, this has been a long but very fruitful session. I think you'll agree. So until next time. See you! Yeah, and with added play features. Nom, 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 nom.